like uh, they mentioned, we um, received a, a conservation collaborative grant um, a couple of years ago, actually, and got started uh, with a project that really had started even before that with some conversations with Colette Kessler and NRCS, um, just uh, with concerns about uh, soil health, concerns about, we've worked a lot on uh, water education projects that many of you, we just had our water festival yesterday and many of you have um, helped with that as well. But we, we have a major concern that, uh, that it was some of the concerns that uh, some of you have, probably many of you have, and, and here's one of them. This is from the American Forestry Foundation and that, that today's generation of children is the first to grow up indoors their plug-in lives are largely devoid of exploring the natural world. I, um, I grew up in El Point, South Dakota, and we were outside all day, all the time. And we weren't even really farm kids. I talked to someone uh, when I was in New York last year, a tour guide, and he was telling the kids about having, he goes, said, I grew up in that high-rise apartment over there. And I never really thought about that before, that people actually grow up in a place that doesn't have a front yard or a backyard. They don't have, they never had to run a lawnmower. They never planted a tree. They've never planted a carrot. They've never planted a flower. And um, it, it was kind of shocking to me and then to be in New York and realize how many people that, that means that that affects. But then on the other hand, I've had um, volunteers at the Discovery Center, both kids and adults, that we asked to help plant our garden or plant plants, and they've never planted a plant before. And I, if I would have told you before I met them, I would have guaranteed you that every kid in South Dakota has planted a plant before. And I, it kind of disturbs me to think that that's not, not the case because some of my best parts of growing up are camping and gardening and, and things like that. And um, I, they have a lot of effect on how I think about the world now and what I appreciate about the world. So a concern is if children are detached from nature, how will they come to value nature and how will they become good stewards of Earth's resources? So that is the need for our project. And now I'd like to share with you a little happier news about um, what our project is, and I hope you'll be uh, excited about it. First of all, I am from the South Dakota Discovery Center. I'm the executive director. Uh, we serve the entire state of South Dakota doing um, all sorts of hands-on science education, helping train teachers to do that, uh, helping train, uh, we've recently got into helping um, doing science communication uh, training for researchers and scientists so that they can uh, take what they're learning and tell people about it. So one, lay people like me will understand it, and two, we might vote for it or help fund it, though they're kind of the work that they do. Um, this is a collaborative grant, so we have several partners and they're listed up there. All of those have, have been involved. We had a first grant, and like Jeff said, we are um, we have just signed on the dotted line for our second grant to um, help finish up the project that we uh, got some funds to plan. So one of our partners is the South Dakota Agricultural Museum. So you'll see their picture up first. I wanted to explain that before I kept talking, but um, what we're looking to do is. Um, what we've actually already started to do is developing a hands-on uh, South Dakota soil health uh, set of exhibits. Um, Colette had brought it to our attention that um, people like you are concerned about um, those of us who maybe don't know uh, or the science related to the soil and the the problems with soil health at this point and the, the challenges that around the world that we're having with soil health and um, describe to us the need to get the public more in, involved and knowledgeable about that so that they can take action. So our um, 
way of doing that is um, through what we do best, and that is to communicate to children and families and teachers. So we're, we have an exhibit hall here in, um, in Pier, and then our partners, the South Dakota Agriculture Heritage Museum at SDSU in Brookings also has an exhibit hall. And um, that's what we um, have been working on is a hands-on exhibit that talks about and teaches people about uh, soil, South Dakota soil health. What you see up here is um, some of the progress that we've made and it's, it's uh, you, you probably know this too because you work with projects all the time, but the getting going part of the project and the planning part of the project um, is not always the part that is flashy and ooh-ah and cheap, to be honest with you. So we feel like we've sort of been doing this for a long time, but we do have some, um, we have worked with, we've had many meetings to decide what our concepts are gonna be that we are uh, working on, and then what it's going to <coughs> look like. And so we're, we're very excited to just have a picture to show you <laughs> today, and the concepts listed. So the South Dakota Agricultural Museum, when we got together, we had lots of, as you know, you all have provided all, lots of information on, um, different soil health concerns and projects, we can't cover them all with what we do. So we decided that we would put together a base exhibit at the South Dakota Discovery Center and a base exhibit at the South Dakota Agricultural Museum. And then what you'll see in a little bit is that we have a piece that will travel <coughs> between the two so that we hit both audiences with that information. And it might have opportunity to travel as well. So you can see the concepts that the South Dakota Agricultural Museum has decided to um, to look at, they're a little more actual ag farm based, um, and they go around the concept of growing healthy soil, and, and we came across this um, statement that really guided some of our work is that we don't, we do not grow plants, we grow soil and the soil grows plants. And we're also trying to talk people into knowing that not only then the soil doesn't just grow plants, it grows us and everything we need as well. So. Um, this will be the base around their exhibit and the permanent part of what will stay uh, in the Agricultural Museum. And then at the South Dakota Discovery Center, uh, we're excited. We're going to have a two-story uh, piece that, um, if you kind of look over here, you're used to soil tunnels. We had one yesterday, a blow-up one that you walk right in. This one you'll walk in and the Discovery Center is two stories. So you'll be uh, completely um, underground and in the soil when you're in that section and, and you'll see the roots of the trees, you'll see the roots growing down from above and there will be um, all sorts of activities where we can learn about the life that's in the soil. And, and these are the concepts that we're looking at covering. That there is life in the soil, that soil is a vibrant and complex habitat, there are different soil types and qualities of soil and that most importantly that people have an impact on soil and we want to have some things within the exhibit that tells people who aren't farmers or ranchers what they can um, do in their lives to protect the soil as well. So that's a, a peek at what that might end up looking like. like. And then I mentioned um, we really specifically, our committee wanted to uh, impress upon people that there is life in the soil and if you disrupt the soil or if you put things on top of the soil, you're taking it away from it, its natural uses. So um, we're gonna have these critter kiosks, they'll be uh, transportable and students and educators and families will learn about what's in the, what, what is living in the soil and what purposes do they serve, what value do they add to the soil, what happens if we cause them to move or to die or whatever might happen to them by our, by human action. Those, there'll be five of those and they'll each feature a, a different critter that you might find in the soil. So those of us who didn't know about a lot of the critters in the soil before are learning words like tardigrade and things like that. <laughs> So we'll probably just have thousands and thousands of South Dakota kids that know what a tardigrade is. So that'll be progress, I'm sure. 
another piece besides the exhibits is really to um, capitalize on the value of teachers in South Dakota and the number of kids that they actually reach. And so we have been working on with our first grant, we have created uh, lesson um, plans and actually units on, on soil health. Um, you have some in your packet, some things, an example of one that we uh, handed out at the state fair this last uh, Labor Day. Um, these will be, um, these will, these will be standards based, they'll be hands on, and they'll be, um, they're not gonna be a full month's unit, they're gonna be something, we want the teachers every year as the kids growing up from kindergarten through eighth grade and on into high school, we want them to hear about soil health either in their science class or their social studies class or somewhere um, every year so that our kids in South Dakota are growing up knowing different aspects of the value of of soil health. So that's where we're that's where we're going with that. And as a part of this uh, new grant that we just signed on to, um, we'll we have promised to train 100 educators to use this uh, curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if Mark would be here, but I know Mark, so I pulled Mark's picture off of the Voices for Soil Health. Another piece of this has to do with that science communication training that we're offering. Uh, Colette has told us a lot about the South Dakota Voices for Soil Health and that some have asked for a little more training on getting out and talking to the public and getting their message across in an effective way. We, we're, we have been trained to provide that kind of training. So that's one of the things that we're going to offer a, um, a little bit later in our project. Um, we're going to uh, look to offer training to 100 uh, South Dakota boys <coughs> for soil health and hope that that uh, makes those people feel more comfortable and well armed going out into a classroom or to the state fair or wherever uh, the messages can get out. We're looking at multiplying, multiplying, multiplying in all the access points that we have the soil health uh, stories and information that go out across the state of South Dakota. That must be the end. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions about uh, what, what we've got going on here or how we're gonna do it? All right, and I hope we'll get to meet a lot more of you as we go through these processes. We're looking at 20, uh, this time in 2020, so I don't know if you have your meeting in the same place every year, but at some point, uh, after uh, the fall of next year, we hope that you'll be able to see that in the Discovery Center. And then the uh, South Dakota Ag Museum is a little on down the road. Uh, we don't necessarily have a timeline for completion of that uh, at this point. We're really excited at the Discovery Center. Uh, we focus mostly with this grant funds on building the, the soil, the underground piece of that but our Rotary Club has just signed on as a community partner and they're gonna invest in building up above uh, a tree house in that tree that you saw on there and that will be our location for other environmental exhibits and we really are invested in having kids um, be more observant and, and notice changes in their environment and, and those kinds of things and so the tree house will have opportunities to do that and then above that we'll have, we have our own uh, water education exhibit and some other things like that that we'll use uh, together uh, with that soil exhibit. And it'll be kind of a changing um, opportunity. So if other exhibits, environmental based exhibits come across, that'll be our station for those. But I think we're gonna have, <laughs> I think we're gonna have a lot of happy kids in South Dakota and a lot of visitors because we have a tiny little tree house right now that's nothing compared to this one, and um, they love it. In fact, some of them are mad that we're gonna even consider taking it out and get a different one because they love this one so much. So th this is gonna get a lot of attention for soil health in South Dakota, and, and so we look forward to it. Yeah. 
So while Christy's got a, a CCGA, um, she is working really hard on securing other partners and working with other partners for this project. And the Rotary Club has doing matching uh, financial assistance for the projects, doing fundraisers. Yep, they're doing they're doing about thirty thousand dollars in financial assistance that they've committed, and then another thirty thousand at least in um, building things and, and painting and putting it together and fundraising. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Appreciate it very much.